drowned in the egg. Cold water, and it's getting colder. Frogs in the bottle, and the time getting older. Calling a quick fix. Yo, put breeze and some air in my odor. Yeah, yeah. Damn, bro, what the f No, fuck this. I'm bugging. I need to put it up, not down. That works. Hey, lifeline going up. That's what I'm talking about. 76 month listeners. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Appreciate that. Shout out to Tallinn, Estonia. Love all y'all. Shout out to Stock on on teas. Nuts. Huh? I thought, like, in a, for a second, I thought it was Stockholm. The fuck is that place? It's like these nuts joke. The fuck? Stock. Stock. Ton on tees. Huh? It's a town in uh, UK. Stock ton tees nuts. Literally a D's nuts joke. Are you serious? It says GB. But this says in England. The fuck is GB? What? I don't know what GB stands for. But apparently it's in UK. So, shout out to UK. Anyway, um, shout out to North Walsham, UK. Why is it not called like UK? Why is it GB? Whatever. Oh, uh, shout out to Swindon, UK. Shout out to Oxford. UK. I have heard of Oxford though. A lot of UK, bruv. Aye, governor. Aye, governors. Hey. I got love for my bruvs. Love for my bruvs. Alright. Um... Daily TikTok. Cringe. Sure. It's 
Is there a big man on my screen? Hey, yo. Hey, three oh, hearts, he's in my internet. Is your hair real? Pull on it to... Bragg. Nah, you... <laughs> I fucked up. I fucking knew it. The second I did it, I knew... Yeah, I realized. You fucked up. Fuck you, bro. No homo. Bragg burger, man. No homo. I'll take that. 17. 1738. Back to back, three hearts. Appreciate it. For our stream. So okay, bro. Chill out. Oh no, what is this? <laughs> okay, that was funny though. That 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 was actually funny. Yeah. There was a hole in my pants. Oh my... You scared the shit out of me, bro. You... You little boy, you just won't stop sharding on me, will you? <clears throat> I totally forgot what we did. Pause on that. Little boy... Hey, yo, bro. What? You got a problem, boy? Bro thinks... He's... Kratos. You shut your tiny ass up. Oh. oh no, my oh. sleeping stream. 24. Back to back, back to back. Alright. Because this motherfucker on work doesn't know Discord has a voice communication. I'm getting back shots, it's crazy. What? Someone shooting your back? Hey, yo, what? <laughs> Someone is doing what to your back? Pause oh, on that. <laughs> <laughs> Was not expecting that from saving. You a brug burger boy? You like brug burger boy? Well, how about I put your ass on a brug burger diet, boy? Put my ass. Hey yo, how we knew I needed a diet, you freaky though? boy. Boy, you got a problem. You are making it very hard for me to not go crazy on your ass, boy. Because this motherfucker on work doesn't know this girl has a voice communication service. What? Eleven of hearts? I'll take it. Bro crying. But he put a heart, so I don't know. Appreciate it. Rapping ain't for everybody. Yeah, I agree. You shouldn't rap, probably. You should have left me. Uh, you should have heard me six years ago. Oh, that shit was horrible. <laughs> Rapping ain't for everybody. Compared to me six years ago, bro, I can rap. I can rap. Like, bro, the progress has been insane. Like the self improvements and shit, it's been insane. For real, for real. Bro, just hate it, bro. Bro, just hating. Facts. Anyway. No! Return to space anomaly and use as return is to send valuable as a primary save. Expedition terminus. So we gotta leave now? Alright, time to leave. It was fun though. Any um, achievements we can uh, collect?
appreciate that. Anything more? Uh. Nah. Wait, you sure we can't? Oh, everything is just incomplete now. Makes sense. Makes sense. What is that sound though? Oh, it stopped. So, time to go. Wait, start it again. We're supposed to go here, right? I think so. What the fuck is that? Nah, actually, what the fuck is that? it is, it's AIDS. It's over. So, where do we exactly go? In here? I'm not sure about that. Oh. Thought it was gain the lantern. Brug burger. Is this the wrong place? I might as well trade. True. What we don't need. Uh, bread. Hello. I mean, I got a whole lot of goop and slime, but we can turn it to good. Oh, this was doing this shit. Yeah. turn it to useful right on 20 yup okay don't need that scrap don't need that Ooh, we're getting rich so, how we going? Um, normal, same old, same old, nothing good, nothing bad. What's up with you? I 
don't think I need this. Or this. I hope I won't regret selling them. Watch the news, that's insane. So bored that you watch the news. Wow. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. At least I traded though. He way crash. Tom Pace is 44, what? How much is here? It's gotta be like half of that. Pretty much, yeah. 20. We're chilling here. Main is like 40 percent percent Celsius. All right. Wait, can we? Ooh, what the fuck is that? That seems useful. Wait, we got puny. The beach is coolest, 38 to 39. Damn. Ah, that's what I needed. Time demand for ambulances. We are blacking out on the streets? Damn. Gotta stay hydrated, man. Desert is at 37. No, it's got to be way more up. Uh. Last time you checked. Sometimes, but the average is 40 to 47. It's still, though, that's pretty close. The fuck. Is it desert now? I guess. It was 
it water or cause of the heat? My eyes. I peered with the guy who tried to kill him. Okay. Only now. Opposite side of America news. There it gets here as well. I mean, probably the same in Estonia. How do I get technology? Can I not just switch my starship and all that? I guess we'll see. First off, let's get all the items though. We, we gotta sell some because we don't have enough room. Rock Burger. Ooh. How hot is in uh, Slovakia? Twenty in here. You're late. It's fine. You're outside. Bitch! I thought the robot jump scared me. Living in the desert, yeah. You could say. What? Bruh. That's insane. Wait, don't they trade? Oh, they're not even here. I don't open. <laughs> Voice crack. Come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth. I'm, I'm feeling romantical. Damn, no trade at all? Wait, what about you? Oh, 
Hi, can I call this mom? What? No shot. Four days, eleven hours. Damn. Let's go. What else can I put in this bitch? Oh yeah, I mean those. Okay, I, I need to go back and sell my shit. The heat you call it CPU a GPU? Oh no. <laughs> Who that? That's amazing. Why? That low key scared me. Wait, let me. I need to know how many space slots we have. So I can do this shit. Side is even inside is heaven. I mean, I guess if you have AC or something, oh. girls have buttholes too. But everyone has a fucking butthole. Yeah, I get it. You can't play. I said okay. They play in Imagine Dragons. Oh no. Okay, bro. They're not that bad. To be honest, I mean, yeah, but not bad. Alright, we need to go back and sell most of my shits. Play it smart. As for this 63, yeah, you can cook an egg, bro. So sexy, what? On the sand too, yeah.
I sold. What do you mean, game is game? Sure you are. Base of the shoes. Okay. Hello. First off, what do I want to keep 100%? Those. Those two, surely. Rug moment. Still doesn't work. Nah. Do a uh, prediction, not poll. Slash prediction. Honestly, we don't need to save Beacon. I see why you say Brug bro. I told her it has deeper meaning. Brug legacy shall live, yeah. Do I do it? Prediction, I mean slash prediction. Try that. Still, still can't. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I looked, but I didn't find any answers. Twitch problema. Could be. stuff like van but no editor roll stuff maybe it takes time I don't know tree dragon can do that I remember and he has editor as well but he had it for a long while ago so maybe it takes time it to work I don't know it is for spam yeah How to be Twitch streamer? What? Okay. I don't need that either. That's so much. No way I'm giving that up. Probably need that. boring and she still gets views well if they're hot yeah who's make money true uh. yeah and the gear nitrogen I have gas I've been farting a lot huh Sure, buddy. No, you should think about what you did. That's wrong. How you put it on me, bro? Fuck. Oh, I can't just take it off. Pause. Stop the stream. Crinkle started the stream. 
Could have raid him, yeah. Shit. What should do raids? I'll take him off later. Be smart. Sure, bro. We got twelve right now. Mm, fuck is useful. I guess. Oh yeah, that's useful. I guess we need that to trade. For sure. Surely those useful. What's the max age I would date? Oh, and minimum. Max age? I mean, I'm 21. Minimum, surely 18. Yeah, 100%. Minimum 18. Uh, 27? Max old. I mean, I don't know, I'm still pretty young, 21. You would say 30. <laughs> Expired, I... an idiot uh if heaven is real what if you were 18 you would say like 26 good option max i guess <coughs> max 50 and they're like 20 yeah 50 is crazy is not even tight what crazy I uh, chemical can't play together huh? younger the sold okay yeah chemical was said he can't play He's outside or something. Which fella did? What? Who timed the mighty can? Someone did? What? I didn't see anyone time out anyway. What? I think you're tripping, but okay. Wait, you did? I didn't even see it. <laughs> okay. Max 
Max 6. I mean, he's just trolling. Oh, you thought it was me. No, I didn't. I guess it was saving them. Did it so fast, I didn't even see. Pause. This takes time, though. Okay, I know 100% I don't want... Oh, it, of course it stopped. Because you can swear you didn't press. Yeah, I can swear as well. I guess it was saved. Game is game is crazy. Wouldn't have said no. Yeah. That's fucked up, man. Get some links. Alright. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. I mean, yeah, we all know you're joking, but the thing is, the joke is not funny. You can joke about shit, but it's not funny, bro. That's the thing. Nah, you're just too retarded. So I'll describe we don't need that. Yeah, it's that deep, bro. I might get banned. It's deep, bro. Pause. Imagine my whole community say that shit. I'll be gone, like, instantly. Banned. If someone does it, then some moron will say, uh, think that's okay and does that as well. Of course. You can literally ban him, yeah. Especially because he's a man. <laughs> I mean, true. True. If I was a girl and titty streamer. I'll get like one day ban and boom. But since I'm a whole dude, I'll get like. I could get a perma ban, I don't know. A minimum a week though. Ultra rare mark L tech. Bro, I'm just. I just wanna play it safe, bro. That's all. That's all, bro. How much you got? One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one, twenty-two. One more. A girl was getting literally fucked on stream. Yeah, four-day ban. Crazy. If I would take my dick out and start masturbating, uh, I'll be probably a perma band. Probably. Five minutes? I gotta shave all my chest here, bro. I'm hairy as shit. True humor on Twitch. What? Forgot how woke Twitch is. Yeah.
Well, oxygen is apparently very useful. 9,000. See if I remember that band. Bro, that was like one, one second timeout. That wasn't even a band. Yeah. Timeout. <laughs> oh, wait, sodium is useful. We can sell metal. I might as well do that. No carbon. <laughs> Better than save it. It's gonna be two days mod already using the power. I mean, honestly, yeah. Twitch would probably agree with you, Sabin, yeah. Because, bro. Because normally, like, in normal people chats, you, you sh you're already banned. You should be way banned. Already power complex in two days is crazy. Am I blind? Would have been banning a race from even existing and being able to even use the same phone. Facts. I don't see any nanites. I think I just got scammed. Basically, he's just saying you're lucky. That's all. It hold we're banned, yeah. Like the actual Twitch moderator, yeah, probably. Nanites are gone. That's great. I don't know where the fuck they went. I'm just gonna put them there. Are you burping so much? I'm just built different, bro. King, call me King is crazy. Technology I'm just gassy like that. Why is it tweaking? <laughs> uh. 
Uh, weapon is art. You will never understand. <laughs> yeah, art. Surely. Down a little, bro. You're laying down right now. Wait, that's actually useful. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna sell them. I have. It's better to see that. Fuck it. Aristonian Chad burping pee suck. Fuck all that. Let's just sell it. Can't keep it, I might as well sell it, you know? Three point five mil. Let's fucking go. Herma Ben you say good, you would come back. Will I play GTA six? Probably. Guys, for me. But I don't know. The price is probably going to be insane for GTA 6. Imagine it's 100 euros. Oh, no, 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 no. Trump, you shot eight times and you missed it. Was standing there. Bro has stormtrooper accuracy, yeah. Eight times is crazy. So what is he was it working with that brewing devil's purpose day as <laughs> woman so, what? Fuck. Of course. They had one. wasn't mathing because it's two more spaces oh well one two three four five it's true yeah, I see to say it's staged crazy Wait, no, no, this is very useful. Gotta take that. Who's the shooter? Did it miss? That's a red flag. Yeah. America moment. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, physical way, Trump. Trump is way better than Biden. It's like Trump, you still don't want him to die, yeah. What? 
Oh, that's not even installed. Got the link. I what? Oh. Scanner, photo cannon, teleport, receive package. Mm. Okay, first I'll take all the S's. What even is this? Who when you are? I Refiner is good. Start posting VODs on YouTube. What? I am. Show the best moments. Yeah, well, that's shorts. I don't got time for a whole video. I just post full streams. I mean, yeah, that's literally what I'm doing already. You don't got the money, Rage. Well, I guess no, then. See, I found a good free editing app. You would do it for me. For the homies. But the thing is, that will take so much time away from, for, for, from you. Really? So you can do it on the phone too. I mean, you probably can, but it's way worse. Yeah. Cargo, two more. I can get this. Watermelon, nice. Nah, bro, I can work over the time in the summer and less over. Okay. The booty cheeks are sweaty, I've been there. Oh, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, 
that sucks ass. Okay. Let me do this real quick and then I'll see the links. Yo. I guess. Damn, four million units. We're making bank. Nice. Get my shit. Peace at uh, deal. What? I can copy. It costs money. It's good though. Fuck it. Fuck it. I could get the starship too. Way more room. Oh my I God, got it, bro. Oh, hell, hell no, man. What the I fuck, got man? It. Get your ass on. What? Didn't I just do that? Yeah, I did that. It's random. I flinched. Are you serious? <laughs> Where's my second ship? This ain't it. Man, I got scammed. Whatever. Okay. Saved. Uh, hey, Manuel, what's up, man? Only spam got the links. For the win. Weather right now. Hello. Good Morgan. Yeah. Snap. 
Yeah, you guys are fucked. That's a, a little bit in Estonia, not much though. Yeah, you guys are fucked. Oof. This is just black. Yeah. You're cooking. About to leak my shit, what the fuck? Oh, hell no. Oh, all right. Someone is selling a part of That's Donald who, yeah. Trump's ear that was shot off. A part. Oh, he got his ear shot off. Part of Donald Trump's ear that appeared to have been torn off in the attempt made on his life in Pennsylvania has been placed on eBay and is currently sitting at a bid of one hundred thirty thousand dollars. The piece of the load, which appears to have fallen onto the stage during the chaos, was then failed to be picked up by the Secret Service and instead was picked up by a person who was present at the rally to watch Donald and is now being sold under the name Mel Melangia Knaves One Nine Seven Zero. The incidents are a twenty-year-old from the local area attempt to assassinate a former president of the what United. Idiot. America, which has not happened since Ronald Reagan, allegedly because of Donald Trump's conservative <laughs> views on the Second Amendment. The piece of lobe has already had 156 bids on eBay so far, with bids coming in every few minutes. With Americans desperate to get their hands on the latest Donald relic to worship a piece of human history, literally. Mr. Trump seems to have recovered well and has yeah. told the press, "Lucky he was a terrible shot. If I had to take the shot, it would have been the best shot you'd have ever seen. I definitely wouldn't be standing here today if it were me who'd have taken." the shot but that's just me i guess these kids these days they're just not trained right has anybody seen my earlobe what welcome back ai peace deals oh yeah it's cursed Make your shit lag as fuck. Rip. Classic though. This is. Oh. He's fixing the. The table. W. Grandpa, man. Yeah, true. Haters will say it's reversed. What a good guy, man. Do you have to engineer gaming true? Crazy camera, man. Famous remember you. I will remember all of you. Man, what's with the ass shots? <laughs> that killed this crazy. Item City in Bulgaria. Paramount. 56? Wow. Pa Paramin. It's like abandoned dog. On mods you only spam and well that was just a certain mod, okay. Or move it, oh yeah. This is literally Resident Evil vibes. She had to do Shirley, bro. Same, yeah. Every day I'm shuffling. Hello? Apple devices. Pyrus is bad, guys. We don't allow you to download third party games. Literally every Android ever. I mean, I guess, yeah. Oh, 
shot at greatness to be mentioned in the history books. And you missed the shot? Fuck! Hell emo, bro. <laughs> disgusting. Like, completely and utterly disgusting. This is not the type of precedent we want to set in our country. Now ask yourself, He's not why part would of someone my be so upset that someone was not literally assassinated? Yeah, that's crazy. Seriously, think about that for a second. At the same time, if he's that upset about Trump not being assassinated, yeah. who do you think he wants to win? And at the same time, where do you think he's gotten these large amounts of information that have led him to believe that that needs to happen to Trump? The fact that he's coming out here and saying it like this is gross. It's disgusting. And like I said before, this is not the precedent we want to set. And the Democratic, along with the mainstream media rhetoric, could lead individuals to believe that some... Alright. Here are the most wanted people by the FBI. There's a guy named Robert... When AI... It's been some time. But needs to be assassinated, yeah. Give him a bike and let him ride it. Do it himself by far. <laughs> William Fisher, who looks like this, who has been on the FBI's most wanted list for over 15 plus us. years. And over the last 15 years, Goodbye. every single trace yeah, of this we, individual I mean, we already has know been who, erased off the face of this planet. The FBI has no information about this guy at all whatsoever and they are still looking for him to this day. Now the reason why the FBI is after him is that he had a wife and two kids, a family of four. And in 2001, they all died, besides him. His wife and his two kids were brutally killed Sus. and the house got lit on fire. But he disappeared, so he became the first person that the FBI suspected. And it's believed that he tried to light his house on fire as a way to cover up Tomorrow his murders, which makes complete then? sense. Now I'm not telling you to do anything, but the bounty on his head is $100,000. Not even to find him, to just get any information on him. How interesting is that? Wait. Today is Monday, I just realized. <laughs> Wait, we're supposed to do React Monday. I just realized it's Monday today. Wait. <laughs> Wait, we, do we even have anything to watch? No, we don't. I mean, we got this. When you think of two countries having a bromance. You thought it was Tuesday? Yeah, same. It's Monday, it should be React Monday. Most nations, nation listed countries. What? Nation listed countries. Huh? Least nation listed countries. I don't. What if it's. Oh, nationalists. Oh, I am retarded. Let's say to I, Manuel. You can't really see it's kind of blocking the view, but yeah, his English is not good. Greece, uh, that's scary. Bulgaria, 69. Russia, 69. Wait, Greece is more nationalist than Russia? That's insane. The fuck? Least nationalist. Hey. Estonia. Top three. Big W. Oh, it does it again. Damn, 
Damn, all of you are here. Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia. Country in Russia, yeah. Sixty-nine. Wait, so what should we do? Do we do React Monday or we just do it like a normal day? Do a wheel? You'll carry. Um, I guess. So. Can't process anything. Uh, it's React Monday. Yeah, we're doing it. React Monday. I've been saving already. Gave some links. Lase end võrgutada Lenori kauakestval värskusel, mis on inspireeritud prantsuse parfüümidest. Hobuse seljas tagurvid. I, I gotta change the title. Oh, um, we should do a. Should we do just AI Tuesday then tomorrow? Someone whispered me. Best viewers on man. This guy needs to get banned. Some bot whispered to me. There you go, get banned, pussy. Yeah, so, Erect Monday, then AI Tuesday. Yeah. The time North Korea and Romania were best friends. Who do you usually think of? Maybe Hungary and Poland getting a little bit frisky, or maybe the thing going on between Turkey and Azerbaijan. But did you know that there used to exist one of the most bizarre country bromances between two of the world's most memeable countries? I'm talking about none other than Romania and North Korea. The Cold War made for some unusual bedfellows, and one of the most peculiar yet little known friendships between comrades was that between Nikolai Ceausescu's communist dystopian <clears throat> Romania and Kim Il-sung's totalitarian dictatorship of North Korea. Ceausescu's rampant censorship, harsh oppression of his people, his dystopian urban architecture and perhaps most famously of all, the dear leader's flamboyant and lavish personality cult have often drawn flamboyant. comparisons of the worst excesses of North Korea. But what if I were to tell you these similarities weren't by accident and were instead by design and that in fact Ceausescu and North Korea were once BFFs ready to die for one another. Today we'll delve into one of the most peculiar friendships of the Cold War. The historical bromance between Kim Il-sung's North Korea and Yeah no, I said he whispered to me, he didn't put it in the chat, but that he could be slick and Ceausescu's Romania, and the massive yet rarely spoken about influence North Korea had in Ceausescu's reconstruction of the Romanian state. 
To understand the North Korean influence, we first have to go back to when Ceausescu first came into power, Thinks all the way back escape, to 1965. Yeah. Believe it or not, there was a time when Ceausescu wasn't universally reviled. When he first came to power in 1965, he promised to be a serious reformer and constantly emphasized the importance of Romanian state sovereignty and independence from the Soviet Union. And considering what happened to other countries when they tried to do just that and uh, tried to distance themselves from the Soviet Union, this took some serious stones. Ceausescu even publicly criticized and refused to participate with the other Warsaw Pact countries in the 1968 Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia. In his early days in office, he also what? eased press censorship somewhat. Because of such moves, there was a lot of hope in both Romania and the West that he would govern more akin to Josef Tito of Yugoslavia in a sort of third way of communism, a more liberal and independent strain of political thought that was willing to work with the West and not completely go deranged over some German All guy's right, autistic manifesto. Back. At the time, Romania's relatively yeah, relaxed economy crazy. was booming and Ceausescu's bold plan to keep it this way was that Romania should position itself to act as mediator between the two superpowers of the USA and the USSR, able to take advantage of the economic integration opportunities offered by both. So the West's hope that Romania would resist Moscow's orbit wasn't completely out of the question and hopes for the country were high. Growing up in Eastern Europe, let's just say what? I haven't had the greatest childhood. Is that American? You, 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 you. And let's just say that that has left me with some issues. I mean, it's obvious just by the profile picture I use, <laughs> Lamal. What is that avatar? Yeah. What is that avatar? As what such, avatar? I've been attending therapy on and off for a good chunk of my life. And honestly, having someone listen to me about my dad issues and having to grow up in a post-socialist hellhole where even the tap water is trying to kill you has been quite helpful. Overall, therapy has been something quite useful for me, also especially when I feel overwhelmed by stress from reaching deadlines and consistently uploading videos onto YouTube. And that's why I can recommend BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp, BetterHelp is an scammers. online service which connects you with a licensed Literally. therapist connecting around a con with the leader of North Korea at a Comic-Con summit. No, not the Comic-Con with nerds dressed in spandex and overpriced figurines, but the Council for Mutual Welcome Economic back. Assistance, the Soviet Union's Eastern Bloc and Socialist State response to Western Europe's Marshall Plan. I mean, that's literally what we're learning. Yeah. How well the two leaders hit it off then, we don't know. But five years later, in 1971, Ceausescu embarked on a tour of Romania's communist allies in East Asia, including China, Mongolia, uh, North well, Vietnam, and North Korea. This meeting between the two leaders, however, would be far different than the one from five years before. At the time, Ceausescu had quite a good relationship with the West, right. and so Kim really wanted to get on his good side in the hopes that Ceausescu could facilitate a working relationship between North Korea and the USA. So. Kim went Bet. all out, spending approximately a year nice. preparing for Ceausescu's visit. Instead of working in the fields or factories, more or less the entire population of the capital, Pyongyang, rehearsed day and night for a full year for shows for Ceausescu's stay. Upon landing in Pyongyang, Ceausescu was greeted with the entire population of the North Korean capital putting on a massive intricate performance of dancing in matching outfits while singing songs or reciting poetry written specifically for his visit. Yeah, These crowds crazy. could be performing on the sides of the road while his motorcade would They did the same thing to Russia now too. Pass by crazy. or in front of him at massive rallies in public squares putting on jaw-dropping complicated displays of what I can only call Something synchronized similar. sign dance or more personal performances at the constant lavish banquets and feasts. Kim Il-sung spared no expense in showing Ceausescu the ultimate communist dystopian hospitality. The entire capital of Pyongyang had been decorated with bright, colorful and elaborate decorations and billboards celebrating the wonderful future guaranteed by a strong and beautiful friendship. Yeah, this good reaction would be better. ...bound by the communist ideals between North Korea and Romania. Ceausescu never had to go one second of his day in the paradise of Pyongyang oh. without either seeing or hearing effusive celebrations, cheering, dancing, or chanting in his honor. There even was a special song written just for his visit. Huh? On 
Until now, the historical relationship between the two states quite frankly wasn't especially meaty. So the lyrics settled on uh, just repeating how great the leaders Man, were. Absolute lyrical genius. When Ceausescu took in all the mass choreography, the unbelievable displays of color, all done for him and his honor, he saw something truly beautiful. The power of a leader to absolutely control and mobilize the population as a tool to instill national pride <laughs> at the snap of his fingers. He couldn't get enough of the non-stop exuberant public adulation, the effusive and non-stop praise of his leadership and the adoring- Screw myself on being realistic, what? Nah, better help literally scammers. Gotta do your research. Public who would burst into tears of sheer joy at the sight of him. He took in how the North Korean people so adored their dear leader, and how Kim Il Sung was inseparable from the state of North Korea, and vice versa. He was the state personified. Kim wasn't just a politician or a mere leader of North Korea. He was the North Korean people's father, mother, family, and uncle that knew to get a wee bit too close. Kim was the people's god Sus. in a slightly obese form. From that point on, it was clear to Ceausescu that upon his return to Romania, there was gonna have to be some changes. Big changes. After coming back from Pyongyang, Ceausescu had found hey, his destiny yo. to rebuild Romanian society into a model communist utopia he saw in North Korea. While seeing Mao's China left him similarly astounded, with Kim Il-sung, he found a very personal connection. And from here on, the two began an earnest correspondence that would last for years. But just being pen pals wasn't enough for Ceausescu. He craved a much closer and deeper connection with Kim. And he had far greater plans. He was especially intrigued in replicating Kim's philosophy of Juche, the North Korean political <clears throat> philosophy of sovereignty and self-reliance at any cost, while giving the middle finger to such pesky nuisances like human rights, due process, or <laughs> functioning independent civil institutions. <laughs> I mean really, who needs any of those? Ceausescu loved Juche so much, he quickly had the official North Korean booklet on it translated into Romanian and rapidly distributed copies throughout the country. A few weeks after his return from North Korea, Ceausescu then gave a speech before the Communist Party commonly referred to as the July Thesis, in which he outlined his future plan for Romania, directly influenced by Juche. Well, at the time, Romania certainly couldn't be called a free and open society. The proposals in it had to pay 200 euros for being Break. The speech put an end to any and all sort of liberalization or relaxation of the state's ideology from the 60s. In fact, it did the exact opposite and turned Romania 180 uh -huh. degrees in the opposite direction. From now on, just like in That's Juche, cute. North Korea, the state party was in charge of all political and cultural activities, including the education curriculum in all schools and universities. All lessons of any kind now had to follow a strict party adherence, <laughs> no. and all education was now to be intensely ideological. Teachers who were suspected of not adhering to the party line were to be replaced with party loyalists. In addition to educational reform, radio, television, the press, and publishing were also now required to contribute ideological education. From now on, just like in Juche, anything artistic such as televised music, ballet, paintings, theaters, opera, etc. must now be revolutionary in nature and contribute to socialist values. As such, media and entertainment in Romania were modified so that from that point on they would somehow relay the ideas of love for the state, Wait. nationalism, and gratitude huh? to the supreme leader. The end goal was cultural and political oh, wait. Romania was communist then, right? Relationism in the name of protecting the nation from foreign influence and contamination. Ceausescu was yeah. particularly also enamored with Juche's philosophy of economic self-reliance at all costs. The Romanian economy was now to be reshaped Sometime, to emphasize yeah. industrialization without dependence on foreign aid or trade. To immediately assist with this, from now on, able-bodied workers, students yeah. and youth would I mean, now Estonia be mobilized into brigades of voluntary labor to work on large reconstruction we projects or agricultural projects as part of obligatory patriotic work. Which, of course, was to be done without pay, as serving yeah. the country and leader was a reward in itself. So, uh, Rishi Sunak, if you're watching, take notes. 
The change Ceausescu was most excited to implement, however, was replicating Kim Il-sung's cult of personality for himself and his wife. And throughout the 70s and 80s, Ceausescu was busy cultivating a relentlessly adoring cult of personality. He took great pains to replicate what he saw in North Korea as closely as possible and directly copied many aspects such as children as early as possible would learn and sing so songs that praised the leader and the mm. party. The leader was to be considered infallible yeah. and as such any criticism of the leader was impossible and would be well, punished. not everyone. Oh, everyone who is here, I mean, I guess. Not sure about Manuel though. Harshly, with informers and secret police disappearing people who would challenge yeah, milk is good for you. Challenge this policy. The state media would also relentlessly broadcast that the leader was a genius from humble backgrounds who worked his way to the top through his superhuman efforts to become the most important <laughs> hero in their nation's history. Of his course. genius literary contributions to communist political thought were often published at regular intervals multiple times a year, and these collected thoughts were the basis for the country's greatness. Oh. In addition to Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu I mean, writing yeah. dozens of their own works each year, many volumes of praise to them were published. Now I feel like they started as socialist. Then they went fascist, no? Annually. The public press was mandated to describe them with such words as geniuses, miracles, morning stars, saviors, sons, secular gods, titans, or even demigods, all extremely humble indeed. And with that, Ceausescu gained the title of the genius of the Carpathians. Day and night, the state produced never-ending streams of works of art made to praise and offer gratitude to the leaders via hymns, odes, songs, dances, paintings, sculptures, poetry, and prose. Throughout Romanian cities, from the hills and mountains of Transylvania oh. to the plain bread baskets of Wallachia Check and amongst the, the yeah, alcoholics lying in the streets of Vaslui, signs and billboards of praise and thanks to the leader were found everywhere. Ceausescu's portrait was omnipresent in both public and private places, and no matter where you went, the genius of the Carpathian's gaze followed. Similarly to North Korea, Romania too constructed entire fake villages or fully stocked oh. stores for foreign visitors, or just the leaders themselves visits, where the residents were actors who praised the dear leader for blessing them with such great and bountiful lives, while uh, actual stores were uh, not so great. Wherever the leader went, the people had to show their adoration and affection by cheering, shouting and crying with joy preferably with large colorful signs or posters declaring their love for the dear leader and their I mean, I kinda have a program, but I guess no one watches it. I mean, if you go to my channel, go to schedule. Yeah, you see? React Monday. Now I have to do Tuesday AI. Mostly game, mostly gaming, and you see Friday, Horror Friday. But yeah, you don't use that, yeah. People don't really use that. Genius benevolent policies such as outlawing typewriters, taxing those empty egg carton so women better, who couldn't yeah. conceive a child, I don't know how and do putting that, the people on a diet lowering their calories by 15% to save up money to pay off uh, the international debt. Parades and our massive public spectacles were also routine and they would have to be rehearsed months in advance, thus pulling chunks of the population for months at a time to rehearse intricate choreography set to music instead of, uh, you know, doing their studies or working to earn their salary or produce actual products I mean, that true. would help out the rapidly declining country. Not that uh, the products were of great quality either way, but it's the principle that counts. Another one of Ceausescu's big dreams was to construct his own Pyongyang-inspired construction vanity projects. The devastating Vrancia earthquake in March 1977 came at... Chemical name program? What? Reaction Monday, AI Tuesday, etc. Huh? Because he couldn't afford food. He did? What? 
Marx loved his ideas, he probably lost all that weight. At just the right time, which he then used as pretext to bulldoze okay, five kilometers program. of Bucharest. You say what? Wait, how the fuck did I read chemical? There's no chemical in there. <laughs> I am tripping balls. Just add channel name the program. I just how the fuck did I see chemical? <laughs> I'm tweaking. <laughs> oh no. I mean, I guess I could do that. Phantom Avenger. the slacks? Beautiful historic old town and this place tens of thousands of people. And so for the next couple of years, Project Bucharest was officially put into motion with the final vision being to reconstruct the capital as a replica of Pyongyang because the old neoclassical Baroque and Art Nouveau that gave the city the title of Paris of the East were way too bourgeoisie and the grand brutalist blocks that would give Bucharest the title Pyongyang of the West were much more in the style by the people and for the people. And with the start of the project, Mark throughout Wednesday. Romania, countless amounts of beautiful and historic architecture were to be demolished. The culmination of this project also resulted with the construction of the most expensive administration building of all time, the Palace of the People or Parliament, which was directly inspired by Kim's Kumsusan Palace and cost approximately 3 billion euros to build. Is brutalism basically how US have made their buildings? Brutalism. I don't know. Zesty Thursday. Okay. Ultimately, Ceausescu worked hard to model his reign suggestion off the Kims in North Korea. With the wait, what was suggestion again? I'll oh, play a game that uh, chat wants to play. Music Saturday. Mark so is the process of his music. Nah, I don't know about Music Saturday. I don't really want to show my music. Oh no. Like progress of my music, I don't know. What if you agree with Horror Friday? That literally exists already. Chemical. That literally exists. Horror Friday. ultimate goal that he was the state that there was no Romania without Ceausescu and no Ceausescu without Romania because nothing screams classless stateless society like acting as a seven wait let me do it right now so I would remember uh... Edit schedule. Does that leak anything? No. Okay. So what was it again? Uh, Tuesday. AI Tuesday. Oh, yeah, we just. Cause I'll probably forget everything. Should just put it on right now. Pause. AI Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, wait, multiplayer is Saturday, plays with people in chat. No, I don't know about that. Nah, AI Tuesday L, Sunday Jackbox. I mean, won't we do Jackbox every day? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Chemical. Just the main part of the stream is, uh, for example, main part of the stream is AI, but then at the end we do Jackbox or something for an hour or something like that. Oh, 
uh, Wednesday. Mark Wednesday. Wait. Wednesday right there. Furry Porn Sunday. Yeah, let me, yeah, that sounds great. So what about Thursday? Uh. Or should I do another Mark Thursday? Not all days have to be special. Yeah. I guess we can do another mark for now. Wait, what? So you keep a jackbox. Like I said, um, probably no, because we do that every day. Just chatting Sunday? I mean, that's pretty much what I'm already doing. ERL Thursday, fuck off. <laughs> I am not doing ERL content. No. There's one idea I saw before. What was it? Wait, cooking Sunday. I mean, cooking would be interesting, but... Nah, I don't know. I always have to get like some ingredients and shit and just cook something. Oh, suggestion. That was another one. Uh, suggestion. Saturday? Sunday? Sunday. I play what people want me to play. If I can. 6 p.m. Saturday? What? We have Mad Madness Day. Play different Madness games. Eh, I don't know about that. Only Fans Thursday. Okay. Okay, how about we just keep it, keep it like that. Mark Saturday. Alright, so Monday, React Monday, Tuesday, AI Tuesday, Wednesday, I play what I want, Thursday, I play what I want, Friday, Horror Friday, then Saturday, I play what I want, and then Sunday, Suggestion Sunday, for now. I play whatever the people want me to play, if it's allowed on Twitch, of course. All right. Good scary videos. 17th century French king, and for mm. quite some time, he seemed to be succeeding at his mission. Throughout the 70s and 80s, the correspondence between the two leaders. I mean, maybe scary videos, but we already have some horror games. 
kept growing, with Kim noting approvingly the changes being made to Romanian society. The few letters we've been able to obtain that were sent between the two dictators show warm sentiments between comrades, with each constantly congratulating the other on meeting such socialist milestones such as increasing steel production True. or increasing the percentage of the party compromising workers and peasants, similarly to two nerds playing Victoria 3. Ceausescu so adored his time in North Korea that he was able to revisit again in 1978, 1982 and 1988. Each time he was... The Lob Saturday? Guess that would be cool, but yeah. ...was greeted with a welcome worthy of a king that consisted of more song, dance and choreographed performances. Even when Ceausescu wasn't visiting Pyongyang personally, he'd sent party officials in his place. And the relationship even became close enough that while we don't know exactly what they were saying to each other, we do know that their militaries what? trusted each other enough to share secrets no. and cooperate. Memos and letters unearthed from this time period show Ceausescu and yeah. Kim's insistence in the belief in the importance of their cooperation for the good of world peace. Because there's no force in the world that can stop two middle-sized impoverished dictatorships on separate parts of the globe. Nevertheless, Kim did his yeah. best to return some of the love, revisiting Romania personally in 1975 and in 1980. Ceausescu did the best to return the hospitality that had changed his life in 1971. Huh. Each time, there were exuberant and colorful displays of dancing, parades, and performances for Kim, attending by hundreds of thousands in the capital of Bucharest. I feel like Putin just visiting North Korea for nostalgia. Press. Kim approved of the dramatic changes to Romanian society and marveled at the wonderful achievements obtained by the Romanian people under the leadership of Comrade Ceausescu in the struggle dedicated to building a multilaterally developed socialist society. Kim's visits weren't only to hang out, he was also there to mark the increasing medical, scientific and military collaboration between the two throughout the 70s and 80s. Romanian universities even hosted North Korean exchange students who came via government exchanges and special scholarships to learn engineering, medicine and the sciences, who would then return to North Korea to implement what they learned. The students would also come for cultural exchanges to learn about they Romanian communism. Normally, Pyongyang did everything they could to prevent its citizens from being exposed to foreign influence, but this exchange in particular was allowed because Ceausescu's particular brand of socialist ideology had been so directly Yeah, a whole stream where I just kissed the camera. Influenced by North Korean political thought. Teenage girls I just kiss my camera three hours straight. On Twitter that protect the honor of BTS and Jinbop with the onslaught what? of death threats for the mere meme of their favorite industry brand band have nothing on Ceausescu. My man was the original K-pop stan. That's not a bad idea. I need either, to find the best way to learn math and science. <sighs> it's brilliant.org. Despite Ceausescu oh, okay. himself being pleased as a partridge at the development of his own personal dystopian communist fiefdom, shockingly enough, the Romanian people themselves didn't return the sentiment. Years Plus of this Romanian that, of juche of relentless economic self-reliance at the expense of the standard of living of its people had ground the economy into dust. After literally decades of the Ceausescu's warping the state into their own personal vanity project and Clip review Saturday? Uh, nah. And decades of oppression, censorship, yeah. deprivation, totalitarian rule, relentless forced nationalism, economic mismanagement, and literal starvation, the Romanian people finally had enough and rose up against their oppressor yeah, during the Romanian Revolution in 1989 and disposed the Ceausescu via execution live on television on Christmas Day. <laughs> As to what Kim personally thought of seeing his friend become a piece of Swiss cheese on live TV, we'll never know. Seeing as North Korea was and still remains the most secretive and isolated country in the world. That On Boxing Day 2004, an enormous earthquake struck off the coast of Indonesia, causing a tsunami up to 30 meters tall to sweep across the Indian Ocean. Over 200,000 people were killed, and coastal ecosystems were devastated. Oh, okay, but I'm good. <clears throat> what else do I like to do? Let's play music. Yeah, he did. 
I mean, what else do I like to do? What? Pidin asutamine näib raske, kui tegelikult vajad vaid parfüümi kvaliteediga Old Spice kolm ühes dusikeeli, et saada mehelikud lõhnad juhstele, kehale ja näole kõik koos. Mees, sa lõhnad hästi. Road recklessness, dumb drivers, Tesla on Tesla catastrophes, road ragers and more are coming up in episode 2. 256 of Tesla Cam Stories. Dave was commuting to work when traffic slowed down for a major collision scene up ahead. Dave quickly realized traffic wasn't just slowing down, the road had been completely shut down and traffic was coming to a standstill. The driver of a Toyota behind Dave decided ain't nobody got time for that and began making a U-turn across a double yellow line. What he hadn't noticed were the oncoming police cars approaching at high speed, lights and sirens active. I bet he noticed after he clipped one of them. The collision was so loud, David panicked thinking he'd been hit, or was about to be, and he quickly accelerated to get out of the way. After realizing what had happened, Dave rushed over to assist the officer. He was stunned by the collision, but he gave Dave a thumbs up before climbing onto his vehicle's roof to get out of the marsh. Another officer stopped to check on the Toyota driver, who was also fine, but we're guessing he got a hefty fine after that reckless move. As a side note, Dave told us he was 20 minutes into his commute when this occurred. An FSD version 12.4.1 is so good, this was the first time he'd needed to even touch the pedals or steering wheel. Huh? Aiden's Number mother was 14. driving home from work with coffee in hand when she was suddenly Honda bumped when a Camaro spun out of control in front of her. The Camaro had hey, been speeding yo. through a school zone, and the Accord driver, a college student, hadn't checked her mirrors before hitting the back of the Camaro, spinning it out Crazy. of control. The Camaro crashed into a VW ID4, Holy while shit. the Honda crashed into Aiden's mother's Tesla. She thinks Autopilot may have taken over after the initial impact, as she felt the car steer itself to the right and apply the brakes. Autopilot. Since school was about to be released, a school resource officer had been just a few cars behind them. He immediately activated his emergency lights and began checking on the safety of the drivers. Firefighters and paramedics also responded to the scene. The three other vehicles all had to be towed away, but huh. Aiden's mother's Model X was still drivable, and she was able to drive it home. Aiden told us his family loves watching Wham Bam videos together, so even though they were bummed to be involved in a collision, they were excited to submit their own Honda Bump video. Number 13. Carol was driving for Lyft with a passenger in her Tesla. While she was stopped at a red light, another vehicle slammed into her. The other vehicle went up on two wheels, nearly driving... Like, how dumb are you? Like, what? ...up onto the back of the Tesla. The I other driver then took off, making this a hit-and-run collision. Since Carol had a passenger, and because she's a reasonable and safe driver, she chose not to engage in a high-speed pursuit. It's okay. Instead, she kept going until she'd reached her Carol passenger's w. destination a half mile away, then called the police to report the collision. Bro just speeds away. Um, I'm not sure what what's wrong loser. with my back of my car, but I'll get you to the Wendy's, okay? Yeah. The American dumb. I have him on camera. I have him on lots of cameras, actually. The offending driver had actually stopped George, at a convenience what? store, where they were arrested after hit. bystanders called the police. Carol still fault. hasn't gotten her Tesla fixed, but between her I insurance, mean, the other driver's so. insurance, and Lyft's insurance, she hopes she right. won't have to pay anything to get the damage repaired. Number 12. Richard and his wife were stopped at a traffic light when an oncoming pickup truck lost control, jumped the center barrier, and slammed into the back corner of another truck. It hit so hard that it knocked the other truck sideways. Then the pickup driver who sideways. caused the collision fled the scene, but Richard's Tesla cam captured its license plate number as it drove by. Break. The other pickup driver then flipped a U-turn at the traffic light before speeding after the hit-and-run driver. Richard called the police non-emergency number and asked if they wanted his Tesla cam footage. Later that night, they stopped by his house and he downloaded the video from his Tesla and provided them with a copy. 
The police told what? Richard that the victim was unable to catch the fleeing driver, Jeez. but thanks to his Tesla cam footage, they'd be able to file a claim with the other driver's insurance provider. We were hoping for an arrest, but still, Tesla cam saves the day again. Number 11. Hank was on his way home with his wife Jenny after Damn celebrating it, Cinco de Mayo. As they approached a traffic light that had just turned red, Fly Hank slowed to a stop. The Jeep what? driver ahead of him chose to run the red light by a fraction of a second. And at the same time, the driver of a black SUV behind Hank sped around him on the left and followed the Jeep through the red light. Hmm, a black SUV. Are we about to witness some instant justice? Sadly, no, the black SUV wasn't an unmarked cop yeah, car, but like wait that. for it. Another black SUV behind Hank pulled out, party lights on. This SUV was an unmarked police. Why is the red light orange? I just realized that. The fuck? Vehicle. The it officer sped after the red time. light runners. Hank doesn't nice. know which vehicle the cop pulled over, but we're guessing he went after the black SUV. Hank sent a copy of his footage to the police, just in case they wanted the additional video evidence. Number 10. Michael was pulling up to an intersection when a red Model 3 ran the red light and collided with another Model 3 crossing the intersection. Michael kept going as he assumed both vehicles involved had their own Tesla cam videos of the collision. Brag. Number 9. Mark Bark was driving home after seeing an opera at the Kennedy Center when he suddenly felt an impact from behind. The Tesla cam footage split just before the impact, so when Mark Bark reviewed the footage, it wasn't immediately clear what had actually happened. In the video saved before the collision, another driver was having issues staying in his lane. Mark Bark thinks he was distracted by his cell phone. The other driver's insurance provider was Imagine. a company unknown to Mark Bark, so he filed a claim with his own provider instead, and they found him not responsible for the collision. On oh. the other hand, the other driver's insurance provider insisted that Mark Bark was at fault and refused to pay the claim, even after seeing his Tesla cam footage. They demanded third-party arbitration, Mark Mark. a process that took almost a year. In the end, the verdict was that the other driver was responsible. Fixing the car took three months and cost 12,000 US dollars. This Number submitter was eight. merging onto a backed up highway in Hardyville, South Carolina. Uh. Check out what the driver of the white Chevy pickup truck following him on the on-ramp decided to do. He drove to the end of the on-ramp, then just merged into our submitter's Tesla. Buddy. Both drivers stopped and waited five minutes what? for a sheriff's deputy to arrive. When he asked our submitter for a statement, he just showed the deputy his Tesla cam footage instead. After the video had played, the deputy told our submitter the pickup driver was entirely at fault. Yeah, our submitter filed a claim stop. with the pickup driver's insurance provider, and the initial repair estimate came to 15,000 US dollars. Holy. Number seven. Peter was at dinner with his wife while visiting Austin, Texas, and they left their gray Model Y plugged into a parking garage charging station. While enjoying his meal, Peter received a phone notification that the charging session had ended, and he immediately suspected something nefarious was happening. When uh -oh. he reviewed his Sentry Holy Mode footage, fuck. he discovered that another Model Y driver had mistaken their well, Tesla for his own. Uh, he spent some time uh, trying to remove the charging classic. cable, eventually ending the charging session before realizing his mistake. That it was At that his. point, Peter's charging port cover had closed, so he wasn't able to plug him back in. His expression was priceless as he mouthed the I'm sorry for what was obviously an honest mistake. Peter is hoping he sees this video so he'll know all is forgiven, and he appreciates the I'm laugh sorry. he gave them that night. I mean, yeah, he's probably Asian. Looked Asian, yeah. Charles Number was sitting six. at a traffic light when the driver of a silver car ran the light right next to him before colliding with a white Jeep and a black car. Charles maneuvered oh. out of the street, then doubled back to confirm that everyone was okay. I then mean, he waited light. for the cops to arrive so he could give them a copy of his Tesla cam video. The officer who collected his footage said, you gotta love technology before thanking Charles for the footage. Number five. While Gabriel was on his way to work and merging to reach an upcoming exit, he found out the hard way that the truck ahead of him had a layer of ice coating its roof. Gabriel had been keeping his uh -oh. eyes on his blind spot while making two consecutive lane changes, and he failed to notice the ice as it hurtled what? through the air toward his Tesla. You're choking your cinnamon toast? What? 
a huge chunk of ice smashed into his windshield, shattering it. The impact left Gabriel momentarily shocked, but once he'd realized what had happened, he sped up to flag down the truck driver. The driver of the box truck denied responsibility until Gabriel showed him the video proof from his Model 3's Tesla cam. He then told Gabriel he didn't have any insurance documentation with him, instead providing contact info for his boss. Gabriel immediately called the number, but the driver's boss refused to provide his insurance details, claiming he wasn't liable for any ice on his truck's roof. Bro. Gabriel eventually gave up, providing no all the information yeah, he had to his own insurance provider, along with his Tesla cam footage. The other driver's insurance provider eventually accepted liability for the iceberg impact before paying 1800 US dollars to repair Gabriel's Model 3. Though. Number four. Alex was driving in Vancouver, Canada when he found himself behind a genius driver who was hauling drywall on top of their hatchback. The load that was obviously legal. not secured well enough, and the drywall had started to angle up after catching air underneath it. Alex realized that the load was going to go flying sooner or later, but awesome. they were on a single lane highway with a no passing zone for the next 12 miles. Meanwhile, traffic behind Alex was tailgating him, evidently unhappy with his speed, and Alex didn't feel like it was safe to try to pull over. Unsurprisingly, the drywall started flying in every direction. Whoa. Alex never felt an impact, so he slowed down and yelled at the hatchback driver before continuing on. Burger. Number three. Oscar also encountered some debris, but he wasn't able to avoid hitting it. As he was changing lanes, a wild ladder suddenly appeared before him. What? The back wheel of his Tesla hit the ladder, sending it bouncing. Thankfully, his car wasn't damaged by the impact. It looks like Oscar wasn't the first driver to hit the ladder that morning. Huh. Number While two. Mark supervised his Tesla on its way to pick up his daughter from college, a truck pulling a trailer merged into his lane. The Tesla promptly changed lanes, and moments later, one of the trailer's tires exploded. Mark told us it sounded like a bomb exploding, but thankfully there was no damage to his Tesla as it continued on its way. Meanwhile, Mark immediately began effect. planning out his Wham Bam submission, and he included this note for our team. What? Thanks for such a great channel. Thanks for being an awesome fan, Mark. No, you need consent. Number one. Our next submitter didn't include a lot of information about this video, and we haven't been able to reach them to find out more. A vehicle on the other side of the highway lost control, collided with the median, and launched some unknown debris directly Ooh. into the cabin of Jack's Model Y. Jack was able to safely pull Sound over before just, taking this I mean, picture yeah, of the damage. Still. Imagine if that had impacted the driver's side of the windshield. Oh, we hope yeah, nobody was injured cooked. in this incident. Oh, and Jack, if you're watching, check your spam folder. Watch Name this video queen. if you want to see more unbelievable Tesla cam footage from Los Angeles highways. Or watch this incredible road rage video from New Zealand, which is our most watched video of all time. Mm, let me try to find a uh, chemical. rooms or setups now, I don't have enough viewers to dedicate a whole stream for that 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 would be fun but I don't have enough viewers what is this I'm Peppa Pig oh is it what four moves why he looks like like a uh, inbred Mr. Beast Silly, <laughs> angry, sad, and alpha. I have four. Sure thing, there's some info about. I don't care, bro. No one asked for that. Why is that a meme, though? That's the top comment. What? Why the fuck did the crater do that? Hey, that's what I say, Mr. Beast. He he does look like Mr. Beast though, but like inbred. Wait, 
That is actually smart, Mr. Feast. Well, that's a way to rob. Girl working together. <laughs> I guess, yeah, true. Uh, what's there? What you could just review anything. I mean, I guess, true. I could just review as a strong random shit on the internet. Not even, like, uh, not my fans, like, stuff, like, anything in general. I could. Hmm. <laughs> w. Comment Samsung W, yep. So Samsung on top, yep. It's a good long while. Same. All iPhone. Give me a minute. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. Talks past it, we'll be fire. Mom reveal? Okay, bro. <laughs> Too bad he's not a guy. Okay. <laughs> Another W. Yeah, I don't think my phone can cannot do that. Are they? They were once men. Your job then, Lou Brock. An engagement ring. I think ten times their salary. Yeah, it has to be in like the six digits for sure. How much do you think a guy should spend on an engagement ring? I'd say at least like a hundred. Oh hell no, bro! If anything, a one k. Okay. Yeah. How much do you think a guy should spend oh, on an engagement no. ring? I think ten times their salary. Yeah, it has to be in like the six digits that for sure. That is crazy. How much do you think? That is crazy. That's why I say marriage is a scam. Yo. To your crackhead. <laughs> bro is German. Best 5k, nah. At best 1k, but I'm never getting married, so I'm good on that. Monster memory crazy. Hyvasti te ismeline mina. Huh? Aeg lõhnata, nagu mees. Old Spice. Kaua püsiv, julge, parfüümi kvaliteet. Meile meeldib lõhnata nagu teismeliselt. See sobib meile. Enam mitte. Lõhnamiseni teismeline mina. That's another... It's all cars. 
I don't just want to keep reacting to cars. When you think of road down. construction, you probably think of concrete, massive bridges, and year-long delays, all to make wider, faster roads. But this project took a completely different approach. Okay, this intersection married, might I look guess. pretty typical, but it proved to be problematic for a few reasons, and something needed to be done. The first problem was the size. This wide turning radius encouraged drivers to take I'm good on that. Imagine though. getting a call from your city's mayor with a challenge. You have 24 hours to plan the redevelopment of a huge part of your city. There's probably a lot you would want to do. Maybe you'd want to put in more housing or more shopping. Maybe you'd want to create walkable streets or a transportation hub. Maybe a park or even a new stadium. Regardless, the options are nearly limitless, and the possibility of being able to create big changes to our built environment is exciting. But in cities, land is scarce, and huge empty plots of land every day all across the US, huge city. plots of land are being cleared and new homes are being built. With the current housing shortage, this should be yeah. a good thing. But the way we Stop build this new housing is going to have an impact on everyone's way of living whether you live in a city, suburb, or rural area over the next several yeah, decades. And unless something changes, despite the millions of well, not for me. job Don't openings that are apparently out there, it's harder than ever to get hired. The news is constantly telling us that companies are desperate for workers and that there's tons of jobs True, just waiting to be filled. Meanwhile, there's stories everywhere of people sending out tens or hundreds of applications without ever getting a single interview. It just doesn't make sense. So what really happened to turn finding work into a full-time job? But a few decades ago, even when there were job shortages, it was still much easier to get a good job. The advice the boomers give of putting on a tie and asking the manager for a job really worked. All it took was enough tries before you finally met someone who liked you. Today, you could try this thousands of times and you probably still wouldn't get a chance. One difference that's easy to notice is that the bar for entry has gotten significantly higher for most jobs. Before 2000, a good college degree was almost a guarantee of a good job. Companies would compete with each other to get the most recent graduates. They were forced to offer a wage that could support a family. If they didn't, they wouldn't get any employees. But now the tables have completely turned and they're only really interested in the very top percent of students. Damn. What used to amount to a free entry tickets become the very minimum of what they expect. Despite over 70% of listed jobs requiring a bachelor's degree, only a bit over 30% of American adults actually have one. But you don't just need a good degree, of course. You also need real-world experience even for so-called entry-level positions. Paper. Companies are so picky now that they're asking people who have just left college to have years' worth of experience, or for a salary they can barely survive on. The only way to get this is to work while studying full-time, which is rarely possible That's if you crazy. need to do an internship for the field you plan on entering. The past always looks better in hindsight of course. There were still job shortages and people still got rejected. But the key difference between then and now is the massive rise in competition because of the internet. If you were a company in the 1980s looking to hire a few new employees, you didn't really have many options. Small companies could only recruit through in-person events, word of mouth, or physical leaflets posted to boards. It was a slow, long process with only a few applicants to choose from. Hiring managers had to treat each applicant like a real person, using their own judgment to figure out who would be the best fit. Large companies only had a few more tools at their disposal. With their size, they could get a foot in the door at colleges or high schools and hoover up applications that way. But even then, they were still much more limited. So just think about how much this process has changed in such a short time. If any company wants a new employee, all they need to do is put a listing out on one of the many websites for that explicit purpose. And it will almost immediately be seen by thousands and thousands of people. That Along with a true. whole wave of different recruiters who will spread it even more. Without any barriers to Way applying easier. like showing up in person, these jobs can get thousands of applicants. There's no reason not to try your luck, so why not send off 50 applications? As it's gotten harder and people need to send even more applications to get a chance, it's only gotten worse. If you're using your personal phone number to close business deals, I've been terrible idea or to just in your next team of business politician. Find the same thing that's down below in the description to get 50% off of your plan. It's exactly the same thing that's happened to dating. Modern technology has globalized the potential pool of competition. 
finding a job or a partner used to be so much more personal. It all hinged on the impression you gave to the person across from you. Now it's a total numbers game. How you fill out your application form or your Tinder profile has much more of an impact than pretty much anything else. And as a result, the standards have also gone up by ludicrous One amounts on both job sites and dating okay. sites. It makes people in companies think they have far higher standards because they have so much more choice. The reality on the ground though hasn't really changed, and the effects this has had on the job market have been catastrophic. It's led to the whole process getting much more dehumanizing for applicants, who have been turned into numbers on a spreadsheet. So those are the biggest reasons why finding a job used to be much easier than it is today. But the real devil is in the details. Even with all of these changes, finding work really shouldn't take hours of searching and hundreds of applications. The reason it's always so frustrating are the sure. things that companies have done to deal with this new reality. So let's explore the different ways they found to make getting hired even harder. Today, the problem for companies have been completely reversed. Instead of not getting good enough applications no, to choose from, both. they get hundreds or thousands more than they need. Every time they need to hire someone new, it means reading through hundreds of applications and filtering out all the ones that aren't suited. In a perfect world, companies would put more time and effort into this, but we all know that hasn't really happened. Instead, they've turned to one of the most frustrating and dehumanizing parts of the modern job market, automatic no, rejection not. systems. Today, over 97% of Fortune 500 companies use what's referred to as an ATS, an applicant tracking system. The basic idea is simple. An ATS works like a sieve filtering out any applications that don't meet whatever requirements the employer has set. When they first came into widespread use in the early 2000s with the rise of the internet, no, they could only that. deal with a few basic questions. If someone ticks the box saying life, they're not no. legally allowed to work, for example, they'd get rejected. Today, ATS companies advertise their services to the public like this is still the only thing they do. Companies like Greenhouse, Lever, or Workday have to admit their products automatically reject people. It's far too obvious for them to deny it, but they try to give the impression that it's only a few legal questions that do this. Of course, no. this isn't the case at all. Rejection questions, where giving the wrong answer puts your CV in the reject pile, are everywhere today. In fact, they're only the first hurdle an applicant needs. You get need cooked to find everywhere. The best way to learn math That's and horrible. <sighs> it's brilliant.org. To get past to beat the machine. As the internet becomes the main place to search for jobs, ATS companies had to adapt. They needed to keep up with the increasing amounts of applications, so they added more rejection questions. Instead of just filtering out the people you legally can't hire, they started giving companies the option to reject people based on whatever legal criteria they wanted. Your address, your experience, any question they ask can make the difference between getting an interview or getting ghosted. Normally, they don't outright reject CVs, of course, they just rank them all based on the criteria they're using. Technically, all an ATS really does is turn tons of applications into a ranked list of candidates. If you end up on the bottom of the pile though, or anywhere near except the very top, you'll never get looked at anyway. An That's ATS horrible. probably won't automatically reject you, it will just put you so far back in the queue that you might as well not even be there. But even this approach still left too many applications for companies to look through. To fix it, they made the ATS able to read the CV itself. Today, these systems can go through applications and pick out certain key words they want to see. If you didn't use those certain words they wanted, you'll end up at the back of the queue and eventually get rejected. They can also read how much experience you have in certain areas, making note of everyone who doesn't make the cut. Even yeah, today, exactly. these systems are far from perfect. If you don't have the same keywords they use in the job posting, then Crazy. your CV can often end up on the bottom of the pile regardless of whether you're qualified or not. Similar problems can like, come from what? how you- If I'm literally qualified, but they won't get it because I didn't put the specific word in it. So they'd rather get some bum fuck who doesn't know anything. Like what? Format your CV. Some templates don't get read as well by the system, meaning they miss out important parts and unfairly reject people. There are ways to avoid this, like I making guess. sure you use the same words they use in the advert, or using a standard template that the system will be designed to read. At the end of the day though, it's not something that people should have to do. Rewriting your entire CV every time is part of what makes finding a job in the modern world so soul crushing, especially when you just get ghosted over and over again. Pretty much every single company in the West uses these systems now, but even with almost 100% adoption, the situation situation could still get worse. AI oh, is perfectly no. suited for use in an ATS. It's already widespread, and it makes these programs far better at understanding people's CVs and filtering people out. So companies will be eager to cut out just a little bit more of the human element from finding new employees, as they might just save a little bit extra on personnel costs. This is the crux of the- Beat the brain out of him safely. He'll thank you later.
the problem with ATS and how they've taken over the entire process. Finding a job used to be a human experience, where you were in at least limited control of the situation. Obviously, you couldn't make it a certainty that you get hired, but you at least got a chance to make a unique impression on whoever did decide. By turning all of the applicants into a set of data, companies dehumanize the entire thing. So out of the thousands of applicants that usually are for each good job, you have to stand out in spite of a system intentionally turning you into a data point on a spreadsheet. But even this incredibly infuriating roll of the dice is still the best outcome you can have when applying to one of these jobs. People talk about the thousand to one what? odds of getting a job once it's posted and they might think they're over-exaggerating. No. In reality though, the odds are even worse. A large part of the rejections people get are because the jobs they're applying to don't actually exist. It's a problem that's only been getting oh, worse. No. The ratio of people getting hired to job openings in the US actually fell below 0.5 in 2023, which means at least half of all job openings are for so-called ghost jobs, which are never going to get anyone hired in the first place. Wow. So let's explore the insidious reason companies keep these listings up and why so many people's time is wasted by them. Ghost jobs are everywhere on sites like Indeed. You wow. can apply to a job listing and wait anxiously for a response, but after weeks or months you either get rejected or you don't hear back at all. In a lot of these cases, it probably has nothing to do with you or your CV. Instead, it was all probably because the company wasn't planning on hiring anyone anyway. In a survey of over 1,000 hiring managers, over two thirds admitted to leaving their job postings up for a month. 10% had left listings on the internet for over six months without filling the role. There's a ton of different reasons that companies do this today, none of which are a good excuse for the time they waste. Sometimes people already know who's actually going to get the job. Some executive some might need something to do, or maybe they've already decided on an internal candidate. Maybe they're just going to dump the workload on one of their current employees but need to make it look like they tried no to find problem. someone else. It barely takes them any time or resources at all to drop some templated job listing online, and the longer they leave it up, the higher the chance that they'll hook that magical unicorn employee that they've been looking for. The person is qualified and experienced but will probably work for under market rate and won't ask for any benefits. Other times, these listings will just be there for appearances. It looks good for the company if they're growing and hiring new people, for example. They might also think that the current employees will wonder who's getting replaced and work harder to avoid it. There's a million sleazy reasons for companies to create fake listings. The job sites will be happy to take their business. And that's another reason it's such a massive problem today. The job boards actively want dead listings. Fake listings boost their numbers and let them brag about the thousands of jobs they have available. Given this illusion of plenty, even when there's- Only scraps on the table. These websites aren't there to cater to job seekers. They only need to do the bare minimum to stay functional. If you're not paying for it, then you're the product, not the customer. Job seekers on these sites don't have any agency. For most, it's a choice between using them or going hungry. The real customers are the companies who post the adverts and pay for the extras. If they want to post dead listings, why would Indeed or any other job board stop them? All of these things have made finding a job that much harder. Today, it's an excruciating trial of patience unless you get unusually lucky early on in your search. Of course, if there is a problem, even one that's been entirely fabricated, an industry will spring up to solve it. Middlemen and recruitment agencies used to be necessary parts of the professional world. If you couldn't get your job seen by the right people, they could bridge the gap and find good candidates for the what? opening. You would think that this instant communication and oh, the ability no. to have your job opening seen by thousands of people in seconds would have damaged this industry. But instead, Instead, the recruitment industry has grown massively in the past few decades. In the UK, the recruitment industry grew to be worth over 140 billion at the end of 2022. 20 billion more than just three years before that. 30,000 recruitment companies now employ over 200,000 people. For a considerable sum, they'll eventually find you a job if they don't just string you along for more payments. Even in the best of cases, all these agencies do is reverse the changes of the past 20 years and give you a real shot at a job opening. Most of the time though, they're only really solving a problem that the wider industry created for people in the first place. It's a whole lot of money which only keeps flowing in because of how hard it is for regular people to do it themselves now. So maybe you got lucky with automated systems, or perhaps you went through the hassle of dealing with recruiters. But either way, you've somehow got yourself an interview. 
except even that crucial stage of the process has been changed beyond recognition. While there may be a short, often meaningless interview towards the end of the process, tons of companies have substituted that for questionnaires and tests instead. Lazy While mom. the questions might vary, most of these kinds of tests are pretty similar. Some of them might ask you about what you would do in an imaginary situation, supposedly to test your critical thinking. Others ask the kinds of questions where you can either lie and give the obviously correct answer, or be honest and get marked down. All of them though are a complete waste of time. It hasn't stopped anyone from Microsoft to Walmart, all of these companies this using them crazy. to sort through potential employees. In fact, big retail chains are some of the most infamous companies for just giving people these tests instead of ever actually interviewing mm. them. Why they need to know your star sign to see if you can stack shelves fast enough is another matter entirely. But the reason Walmart is the most enthusiastic about these tests above all other companies will become clear soon enough. These tests don't come close to giving employers information on the skills and experience that candidates might have either. Most people rashly just try to figure out what answers they want you to pick. The integral question of whether you'd be a good fit, on which the entire process should depend on, has almost been completely forgotten. Today, even references are nearly always just a confirmation that you worked at a company for a certain amount of time. Any information on whether you are actually a good employee can't be given anymore because you can sue people who give you bad references. It means that companies just don't don't make themselves liable. So if they don't actually measure your aptitude, what's the point of all these aptitude tests? A lot of the time, the actual content of the questions doesn't matter. The main thing they're testing people on is how eager they are to jump through the hoops in the first place. If you can see through the corporate language and spend the time figuring out what they want you to say, you're already conforming. It's also why there are often multiple different tests at different stages in the hiring process. The more of their hoops you'll jump through, the more likely you are to be a good corporate drone. Walmart's tests have the same purpose as the humiliating dances they make their employees do. They break people down just a little bit more. Another reason for these tests has nothing to do with the candidates at all. Instead, they're in place because the upper management has no faith in the people further down the pyramid to choose good employees. Once companies start hiring by questionnaire, they can take middle management out of the loop entirely. It means they can put even more of their faith and trust into data and spreadsheets over real human judgment. With all of the changes we've seen in hiring in the past two decades, a common theme has emerged. All of these changes take the power out of the hands of the applicant and put them into the hands of corporate management. The process of getting your applications noticed is an exhausting numbers game. Either getting lucky or sending off dozens or hundreds of applications is the only way people can actually survive. I looked at the data. If you just applied to a job through a job board, the odds of you getting hired were about 3%. So you got to apply to a lot of different jobs in order to have a chance to get them, and you're going to get lots and lots of just no responses. Even if you do what? get through the first stage, employers will happily waste months of your time. They'll put you through endless different stages of interviews, tests, and trial periods, all to just ghost you after they choose somebody else. It's a truly dystopian part of our modern society that all of these barriers have been put in the way of people simply surviving. And the reward at the end of this arduous journey is just usually a job that pays the same wage as it did 20 years ago, before all of this even happened. In today's economic climate, it's a question of survival. Every paycheck can make or break someone's entire life. These artificial delays have done serious damage to society and eroded what little trust there was between employers and employees. So you can play nice to try and dupe the system, but never really buy into any of the rhetoric about family or trust. Don't fool yourself into thinking these companies actually care about you or an equal system or any other garbage. It's a myth that everybody's hiring, as it's been shown repeatedly that there's much more to this equation that first meets the eye. Bondura Remondilaen. Rohkem infot bondura.ee Wow! Not bad long ago. Everything getting more cooked than cooked. You get zero fucks about you, yeah. The United States was renowned for its railroads, Destroyed yes, America. its railroads, and it had some of the best railroads in the world. Railroads. This was one of the biggest accomplishments in world oh, history yeah, in terms of engineering. Lot. But looking around today, that nice might cars. seem hard to believe. With most of the major cities in the US seemingly being more favored to cars than humans. While countries like China, Japan, France, Germany, Spain, Uzbekistan boast high speed rail networks, the US, the richest country in the world, has some of the most dilapidated railroads and antiquated trains in the world. Although there are plans to launch a high speed train from Las Vegas to SoCal very soon, chances are it will be a catastrophic failure, or it just won't end up happening. 
As this has been the case with every other public commuting train project the government has worked on for the last few decades. So why does America not actually have a proper rail system? What's going on? And when did things get so off the rails, so to speak? Well, you see, the lack of public trains in America is a weird paradox. The US has the highest amount of rail lines by far globally. In fact, the entire country was built by trains. Men of the 1800s industrialized the US through building rail lines across the country to connect the states together. Tycoons like Andrew Carnegie and JP Morgan developed a railroad Crazy system knows. that played a crucial role in facilitating the US's global dominance, enabling the movement of goods and people from the West Coast to the East Coast. It was so powerful in America that the railroad system them, created several temporary settlements known as Hell on Wheels that emerged along the route. Entire towns and cities built to facilitate the railroad system in America, Las Vegas being one of them. So much so that trains and railways came to represent the increasing industrial strength of America and helping America achieve its manifest destiny. Without rail lines, the US would not be the powerhouse it is today. Now, but if you fast forward to railroads and shit. Now, it seems like America is stuck with just giant highways, car-focused cities, and an anti-human design with its public infrastructure. So the question is, where did it all go so wrong? How does America have the most rail lines in the world, and yet no real rail system for people to use? I mean, it's getting so bad that in places like Los Angeles, people like Elon Musk are literally designing systems with the boring company to have hyperloop systems underneath the city to shuttle cars around. Tunnels are, the, in my view, the only solution to urban congestion because we have a 2D road network and we have buildings in 3D. Like, and everyone wants to pile out of those buildings and into those buildings at the same time. You get Obviously, you're gonna have a traffic jam. But wouldn't a much better, K easier, almost. more developed idea Holy. to be just having a public train system Oof, like yeah. the rest of the world? Well, there's a good reason America doesn't have this, as it doesn't make any sense with all the rail lines and money in the world that the country is without any functioning public rail line system. And whilst you could blame the demise of US rail on the rise of automobiles and airplanes, it would be disingenuous. After all, countries all over the world, Spain, France, Japan, has some of the highest rates of car ownership per capita, and yet their rail line systems are insanely productive and incredibly popular. To understand why this isn't the case in America, we need to look at the year 1971, when the majority of long distance passenger traffic was transferred to Amtrak. <laughs> Tänu parfüümi oli tehnoloogiale, püsib intensiivne parfüüm sinuga päeva lõpuni. Lenori parfüümiteraapia. Kolm korda kaua kestvam värskus. Lisa Lenori graanuleid, mis toovad koos Lenori loputusvahendiga kuus korda värskuse kuustisusi. Harvem. Ja masina teie pesemisel säästad elektrit. Aga mida kauem riided pesemist ootavad, seda rohkem plekid sisse kuivavad. Ariel Extra Clean Kapsel plekki eemalduse jõuga. Eemaldab mustuse, mm, nii et masina täis riideid on laitmatult puhtad ja lõhnavad no, fantastiliselt yeah. värskel. Ariel Candy. Extra Clean. Hoia lastele kätte saamatus kohas. Yeah. As this would turn the US railway system into a third world one, rather than a world class one. President Richard Nixon signed the Rail Passenger Service Act in 1970 eliminating the obligation for private rail companies to offer passenger service. As a result, the next year Amtrak was established by the US what? government. According to its website, this is a corporation that strives to quote, deliver a high quality, safe, on-time rail passenger service that exceeds customer expectations. Right. The key word here is striving because Amtrak in its 50 plus years of existence has never managed to do any of these things. Since its inception, it has always lost money. We're talking about an operation that can lose as much as $2 billion in a year. That's considerably more than the GDP of a number of small countries. Today, as Vox reported, the vast majority of passenger rail in the US is, for lack of a better word, dire. Not only do the trains lack the cutting edge technology okay. seen in China and other powerful countries, they're so slow, very slow. In fact, in some parts of the country, travel times are worse than they were 100 years ago. For example, if you want to travel from Washington DC to Pittsburgh, which is approximately 250 Pittsburgh. miles away, you can opt out for a four hour car journey, or if you choose to go by public transport, a nearly eight hour Amtrak train ride. Furthermore, there is only one train per day that covers this route, departing oh, no. from DC in the late afternoon and arriving in Pittsburgh just before midnight. On the other hand, mega I don't care two shits about conspiracy. Bus offers a slightly quicker journey with two trips per day, charging $10 to $15, while Amtrak's fares are roughly five times the price. Prices everywhere are becoming out of control. Dollars, spending is insane. Earned more estimate than quick. Mortgage pay for. So call 866-885-1083 or visit AmericanFinancing.net forward slash moon to see how much you can save.
After attempting to reserve a ticket for the following day from New York City know, to maybe. Washington, D.C., a CNBC journalist discovered that a business class ticket would cost $674 for a round trip, while first class was even more expensive. Interestingly, a first class ticket on a Delta flight was priced at $548. For a trip scheduled further in advance, Amtrak offered a ticket for $457. Yeah, I don't watch any game theories. Whereas first class on Delta was available for $343. And that's not to mention that Amtrak trains are also terribly late, perpetually. As one conductor told this reporter, being 12 hours late is perfectly normal. In a given year, as the same reporter notes, passengers can expect to experience a cumulative delay of 11 weeks, with only 28% of trains arriving on time. But it gets even worse. You see, this sobering statistic is actually more concerning than it seems, as each long distance train is allowed a 30 minute grace period before being considered late. And these delays add up. According to an audit conducted by the Amtrak Office of Inspector oh, General, no. the federally subsidized train system, which currently has a punctuality rate of only seven. What? The government planned it. Okay. 23% has the potential to save $12 million annually in reduced labor costs, in addition to ticket sales if it improves its on-time performance by just 5%. Additionally, if Amtrak's numerous long-distance train routes were to arrive on schedule 75% of the time, the company could save a significant $41.9 million per year, which means the US, for the first time in its history, rely far less on cars. The US's train system is really shocking. For being the world's richest country, even Turkey, Poland, and Uzbekistan's train system are all far faster than the US's. But while Amtrak hemorrhages money, government tax money, this hasn't stopped the company from paying its executives exorbitant salaries. Last year, the Washington Times reported that Amtrak executives are enjoying substantial financial benefits, with some of them earning as much as $780,000 a year. Meanwhile, passengers of the train system continue to face delays and disruptions in services. The audit conducted by Open the Books, a government spending watchdog, revealed that the top 10 executives at Amtrak receive salaries ranging from $500,000 to $780,000. And this is all taxpayer payroll, yet only a portion of the payroll information has actually been made public. The salaries of approximately 19,000 other employees haven't been disclosed, but according to calculations made by the Watchdog Group, these undisclosed employees have an average annual salary of $121,000. So it's not really any wonder that it costs so much to take a train in the US. It's an insanely swallowed up bureaucracy running these train networks, which is ironic considering that the, the US is home to arguably so the best freight train service in the world. But it actually oh, makes a lot of no. sense the more you look into it, because the success of freight trains in the US is the reason why passengers passenger trains are so bad. As Vox also reported, the success of US freight rail has yeah, overshadowed and cancer. continues to overshadow the passenger rail sector. Freight companies own most of the railroad infrastructure outside of the Northeast Corridor, the only part of the country where the passenger rail is somewhat decent. Amtrak is forced to operate on limited capacity, so as a result, the technology and scheduling of passenger trains are compromised in favor of freight operations. But China, France, Japan, and Spain have also constructed modern state-of-the-art high-speed rail infrastructure, specifically designed to cater to passenger trains. So why can't the US do the same? Well, bad planning and bureaucratic BS has landed the country in a really bad position. Amtrak is actually- <laughs> stated that it requires over $100 billion solely for implementing true high-speed so rail in the Northeast yo. Corridor. That's just the Northeast Corridor. And that high-speed train I mentioned from earlier, the one from Las Vegas, has received a $3 billion grant. Now, high-speed rail in Spain costs nowhere near this much. The Cato Institute, meanwhile, estimates a potential Obama. price tag of around $1 trillion for a complete overhaul of the passenger rail system in the US. In other words, it's never going to happen. The US can build all the new high-speed trains at once, but as long as freight operators call the shots, those trains won't be going anywhere fast. Amtrak's ability to manage scheduling delays and on-track maintenance is limited due to the fact that over 70% of the tracks it operates this, yeah. are either owned or shared with private freight companies. And this entire system has been set up ever since 1971. And to compound matters even further, Amtrak has a horrendous history of negligence, with lots of Americans losing their lives because of it. On March 9, 2015 in Halifax, North Carolina, an incident occurred when an Amtrak train traveling from North Carolina to New Jersey derailed after colliding with an oversized tractor trailer that was stuck on the tracks. The collision resulted in at least 55 individuals sustaining injuries, some of them incredibly serious ones. And then just two months later in Philadelphia, an eastbound Amtrak passenger train derailed 
while going around a curve at 100 miles per hour, despite the Just speed limit for that section railroad. of the track being 50 miles per hour. Like, the accident bro. resulted in eight deaths and left over 200 others seriously injured. The cause of the derailment was determined to be a combination of high speed and human error. Then the year later in Pennsylvania, two more maintenance workers tragically lost their lives after being struck by an Amtrak train traveling what? at a speed exceeding 100 miles per hour. The incident also resulted in the derailment of the lead engine of the train. Shortly before this tragedy, in Kansas, oh another Amtrak train en route from Los Angeles to Chicago derailed in the southwest region of the state. This derailment caused five cars to come off of the tracks and left at least 32 individuals injured. You better even not just recently, this. in 2022, okay. another incident occurred near Missouri when an Amtrak train traveling from Los Angeles to Chicago also derailed, causing the loss of four lives and leaving approximately 150 people injured. There are way too many stories for this video involving Amtrak human suffering and loss of life. But you start to realize there's far more to this picture than just Amtrak itself being mismanaged. In fact, the entire Amtrak mess has to be viewed through a broader lens. The US railway system is a symptom of a much more widespread malaise. Even the White House agrees. You see, US infrastructure is widely criticized, and there's a very good reason for this. As the White House report outlines, public investment in US infrastructure as a percentage of GDP has decreased by over 40% over the course of the last six decades. The US is currently ranked 13th by the World Economic Forum in terms of overall infrastructure quality. Yes, 13th. Even though it's by far the richest country in the world, the nation's I mean, deteriorating and fragile infrastructure is evident in many huh. ways. For instance, the report outlined that more than 45,000 bridges and one fifth of roads in the US are in poor condition. The recent bridge they collapse suck. in Baltimore that killed six people is a prime example Not of poor really. US infrastructure. Now, for the uninitiated, before collapsing, the France's if trains are built good, they don't suck at all. I've liked all trades I've been in, in Estonia at least. Scott Keybridge was hit by a large container ship. And as yeah, the media reported, it seemed to lack any extra protective measures to safeguard it against potential collisions with ships, which have become increasingly hazardous what? due to the evolving size and structure of cargo vessels. In just the past 10 years, the average capacity of container ships has risen by approximately 50%. Yet the US is stuck in the past and the refusal oh, to America. keep up with reality is yeah. costing lives. And the Baltimore tragedy is just the tip of the iceberg. In 2007, as the White House report notes, the collapse of the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis resulted in 13 fatalities and 121 injuries. And as for lead exposure, the US is high on its own supply, literally. Despite the irreversible health effects of lead exposure, millions of Americans still receive water through lead pipes. The Flint, Michigan water crisis in 2015. This is American tap water? Oh no. <laughs> Thousand Taylor Swift, way overrated, and the stands are cancer. Bro, they have like third world tap water. They're proud Europeans, yep. Where toxic levels of lead were found. In and it's clear, yeah, red one is insane. You can't trust your tap water? Why? the water supply caused a state I of emergency to be declared. It took until just a few months ago yeah, for is. the US to ban forever chemicals in tap water. The poor quality of public well, transportation and rail systems, it's clear that there is a giant lack of funding and focus on these key essential things that keep society running. Which is why the poor quality of the Poison? rail systems in America what? aren't just discouraging. They are, as the Center for Strategic International Studies warns, a national security threat. Experts are warning that the revitalization of US infrastructure, railways included, must be prioritized as a matter of national security rather than being dismissed as a secondary concern, oh, wow. especially when you look across the world and you see the huge rise in Chinese public infrastructure, with the Chinese government completely focusing on revitalizing the public infrastructure within the country. And now China is light years ahead of the US in this regard, which is why it's so worrying. You see, a country mm -hmm. that can't build decent rail lines, bridges, and roads is at a big disadvantage to an enemy. You're down bad. Give me the bills entire cities in a few months. 
By increasing public investment in infrastructure to levels comparable to those of the mid 20th century, over 3 million jobs could be created by 2029, consequently enhancing productivity, according to CSIS. For every dollar spent, the US economy would grow by $2.70, which is why it's clear to see that the demise of US railways is part of a broader depressing picture. And whilst the most powerful country Looks in the like world it. struggles to ever build rail lines, the EU is about to launch Rail Baltica, a new project worth nearly $6 Baltic. billion. Dollars, connects Let's go. the Baltic states to the European rail network via a 540 mile rail system that will stretch from Estonia, Estonia all the way Poland. down to Poland. Now, the EU gets criticized a bunch, and rightly so, but the fact that it was able to get so many countries Wait, to. Wait, I can go to Poland then. Should I do a Poland trip? Oh, no, no. Come together to agree to the logistics and build an international rail line is pretty. It's kind of. <laughs> impressive. It and work. the American public would be much better off Rug. if the states had a similar focus on Amtrak. Because right now, the US's Poland, rail line system okay. is still stuck in the Stone Ages. Oh, bad. Okay, cool. Let's cry. No, that's fine. We all have our. Oh, uh, kinks. you compare with a <sighs> Mr. Peterson what should you do if you are uh, depressed listen if you are depressed just get a juicy ass femboy if you need one just go to Thailand you will find millions there being in a relationship with a goth femboy will cure all your oh, mental no. problems this is how I became who I am today yes Mr. Peterson what should you do if you are uh, depressed listen this is magical. if you are depressed need to apply we already have your data oh based have a penis girls have a vagina <laughs> Okay. Kiss. Classic. Hey, emo gang. Never do that again. Do you know how rude that is? That is actually a sexual assault. Never touch me again and believe. He didn't even touch you though. That recording. <sighs> um, actually, 300 years. <laughs> My revolver says otherwise. Uh, If there's one man who's shown he can rise above the dirt and grime of Hollywood, it's Ricky Gervais. Coming from virtually nothing, he built a career spanning multiple- mm. nah, it, award winning stand-up specials and movies. But that was until like he co-created one of the most acclaimed sitcoms of all time, The Office. The remake of which became the most popular sitcom of all time. It's made all the more remarkable by the fact that most of Hollywood absolutely hates his guts. But despite multiple Let's attempts go. to cancel him, and despite Ricky exposing the hypocrisy to the world at the yeah, Ronald Ward events, his career is still going strong. But I did see the one clip that somebody put on the internet about him saying, uh, don't virtue you signal, just come out here and get your little prize, go fuck I off, because nobody cares about your opinion. I was like, thank you. Thank you, Ricky. 
So let's see how Ricky Gervais exposed the disgusting industry that is Hollywood. Now Ricky Gervais is probably the last person you'd expect to find fame. He was certainly never searching for it himself. Nice. He was born in 1961 in Reading, England, to a working class family living in a council estate, which is we a kind of British care. social housing. For the first 30 years, Ricky Gervais lived a completely ordinary life. He went through school and then university like anyone else, switching his course from biology to philosophy because it took far less time. He was even in a band, although their first record only ever got popular in the Philippines Philippines years after the band broke up. After university, Ricky moved with his girlfriend to a tiny one. Lenor esitleb. Kas pesule on võimalik anda välisõhu värskust linna selades? Nüüd on see palju lihtsam. Tänu uuendustele Lenorilt. Kasuta Lenor Fresh Air effekti ja saa pesu, mis on sama värski nagu õues kuivatatud. Proovi meie parimat värskust bedroom flats, working odd jobs and hovering on the fringes of show business. In the early days, obviously, separate nothing. In fact, we lived in one room for like the yeah. first six years. I mean, it was tiny. It, uh, it was a bed, a window, a door, obviously, to get into it. <laughs> I could, in bed, right, there was the... I could open the fridge door. Yeah. Uh, seriously, there was yeah. a fridge, a cooker and a sink. Yeah. There wasn't even a bathroom. That was shared. <laughs> with the other rooms. It was this time in the real world that cemented Ricky Gervais's humor and common sense. It gave him a knowledge and understanding of real people's lives that most of the Nepo babies in Hollywood will never understand. The ego and self-importance that flows through Hollywood was never a problem for him because everything wasn't handed to him. Ricky would bring his real life knowledge and experience to his comedy in a way that few have been able to replicate. But most of all, it was his understanding of normal people and the characters you meet that sealed his rise to fame. No While Ricky Gervais love became you. a household name off of the back of The Office, it wasn't where his career began. Instead, the office and the idea for it came from a radio show Ricky was involved in a few years before. It was while working there that he met Stephen Marchant and, and the never, two immediately sparked a friendship. I never watched a British The Office. Maybe I should do that. Now, the radio show would get cancelled only a year after it started, but that didn't matter. It was the connections that he made that were important. Right. It led Ricky to getting on panel shows and other... You're just Mario? It's a me. I'm Mario. Radio shows, slowly building connections in the industry. A couple years later, and Ricky and Steven had built what? enough recognition to get noticed. So, they set out to make the pilot for their own show, a satirical mockumentary following a set of office workers. And this was where Ricky's character of David Brent came to life. And in the digital age, where our personal information feels more like public property, Add tell us and say, oh my consider God, I don't have my hell. It's a masterful depiction of a character that we've all probably met before, made all the much better by the small details Ricky <laughs> added to the performance. The way he strokes his tie when he's proud, or effortlessly seems so oblivious to everyone else's embarrassment, shows it all comes from real life experience. David Brent makes it clear that from the beginning of his career, Ricky Gervais had a very clear understanding of how people use self-importance to create an illusion for themselves. David's drive for power, fame, and for everyone else to both like and respect him is barely under the surface. Both the audience and pretty much all of the characters around him can see it. It's the central character what? combined with the hilarious realism of the rest of the show which makes The Office one of the best comedy shows of all time. It was something that regular people were crying out for, but that the media establishment simply couldn't provide itself. Of course, with so many people watching and laughing, the awards you seemed to in. The Office's success also gave Ricky Gervais's comedy career a jumpstart. His first special called Animals put him straight into the top tier of comedians in the world. The content of his stand-up was made up of the same brutal honesty that people had come to expect by now. If a joke was funny, Ricky didn't shy away from it. Whatever the subject, if there was laughter to be found, then he would pounce on it. It's the very essence of comedy that it needs to challenge your expectations, and often that involves tackling awkward subjects and offending people who can't take a joke. At the start of his career, this wasn't a problem, but over the past decade, we've seen the pendulum shift, and now comedians can easily get ostracized yeah, for one wrong statement. Ricky You're Gervais has been immune to that, like, mainly what? because his jokes are always just jokes. Often comedians <laughs> land in trouble because their joke was bad and it spoke to a real prejudice they have. But it was never like that for Ricky Gervais, who was always just using the subject to make people it's laugh. He doesn't care if people get offended, so the attempts to cancel him just dissolve yeah. into nothing. Hollywood and the media world as a whole didn't have the experience that made Ricky Gervais so loved by audiences. So as his career grew, what? many were eager to secure his talents. Crazy it was manual. his time working on his stand-up comedy that was the most important for this. Ricky Gervais was naturally gifted, of course. True. The success of The Office meant that he could skip performing to small crowds for years, trying to get noticed, and he was able to go straight to his first special, which was meant
met with widespread acclaim. Over the next decade, Ricky Gervais spent his time constantly working on and refining his comedy. He expanded on this process in a later interview with Backpage. You do it every night and the audience is choosing the best bits. It's less of an art and more of a science. Now I've done this show to 500,000 people, there's not an audience who understands English yeah. that won't laugh in the same place. I could give you the readouts on a graph and it would be exactly the same. It was through this process that over the 20 years after The Office, Ricky Gervais came to understand what real people laugh at and what they're interested in. That constant feedback and the need to stay in touch was something that Hollywood completely lacked. His ordinary background and viewpoint were exotic to them. It was this quality that got him booked so often for late night talk shows, comedy specials, and it's what eventually landed him his gig hosting the Golden Globes. Ricky Gervais hosted the award yeah, ceremony five hosted. times in total, each time bringing his own brand of honest and unapologetic humor. But by the time number five had rolled around, he was getting sick of it. When he started his career, most people he met didn't have the time for his jokes at the expense of celebrities. But years of scandals and being exposed for their crimes had since hardened the general public. What made it worse was the constant virtue signaling and the fakeness of celebrities caring about causes of regular people. Ricky was no stranger to charitable work, of course. He's done more for animal rights than nearly anyone else in the spotlight. Dumb. But it had become clear to nearly everyone that most celebrities were just using charity and activism as a way to look good to their celebrity peers. It was a yeah, marketing tool to land them a better movie. Hyvasti te ismeline mina. Huh? nagu mees. Like, that's crazy. They're just... Uh, donating to make themselves look good or some shit. Like, why not just donate because you have money and other people need that money? Like, the fuck? That's so weird. Of course we get a casino ad. Boost casino, come. Imagine there's no heaven. Kill Mojo. It's easy if you try. <laughs> Did you see that Imagine song that all those knuckleheads got together yeah, and sang? Yeah. Imagine there's no heaven. <laughs> This is not the time when Plus everyone's Grammy's come, dying, yeah. you fucking idiot, to sing Imagine There's No <laughs> Heaven. So and there's this sense of, you feel like they've, that they feel like they did something yeah. significant there. She's like, so happy. She's Gal like, Gadot, whatever yeah. fucking name her, Wonder yeah. Woman. She's got this beautiful smile on her face and so happy yeah. to sing that. Thank you. Just like, like she's seducing you. Yeah. I lost my job at the meatpacking plant, but... Gal Gadot sang Imagine. And it's a today. terrible version. You guys suck at singing. To get them in better positions of power, it was this hypocrisy piled on top of Loki, all the others yeah. that led to Ricky's infamous speech. Now, if you're one of the only people who hasn't seen it yet, you should really give it a watch. He was brutal. Covering the abuse scandals, the funding from evil companies, no, Hollywood's problem shouldn't. with predators. Chill out, bro. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Seriously, most films are awful. Lazy, remakes, sequels. I've heard a rumor that there might be a sequel to Sophie's Choice. I mean, that'd just be Meryl Streep going, well, it's gotta be this one then. <laughs> The lack of ideas, the sequels, as well as a few personal roasts. Spoiler alert, uh, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeff Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. Every scandal of embarrassment for these people was there. Now all was covered in eight short minutes. Ricky Gervais yep. is perfectly set up to take down this kind of self-importance and ego. The groundwork was laid by the way that the office deconstructs David Brent's bravado and unearned self-confidence. That's Better obliviousness to who everyone else sees you is exactly the same problem that Hollywood has. He knew that all of the people at home watching were the real audience. The people in the room getting the awards were only props. It's clear this was the right decision now. Nobody remembers who actually got the Golden Globes whilst people still talk about his monologue today. You can tell which of the actors and executives have bought into the Hollywood world of illusions by how they reacted to the joke. Lots of them, like Tom Hanks or Jonathan Price, took huge offense at his jokes, clearly taking themselves far too seriously as they shake we'll their see. heads at Gervais' jokes. Others like DiCaprio were laughing along with us, even when they were right in the crosshairs. It shows that at least some people in Hollywood are capable of making a joke, but the majority are still hooked on political correctness. It's clearly a completely performative trend for them. As Ricky said in his speech, they'll happily overlook the abuses going on within Hollywood itself. But the second someone makes a joke or brings attention to these things, it's an inappropriate joke that's worthy of getting cancelled over. A superb drama about Just the importance of dignity chair. and doing the right thing made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney, 
If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So it comes from a desire to be famous and relevant, to stay afloat in the constant maelstrom of Hollywood. They need to keep their reputations intact because they all depend on each other for their multi-million dollar contracts and place within the industry. Ricky Gervais, who's been in the business for years, but is still an outsider to what? the establishment, is perfectly placed to make fun of all of this. He's already proven himself that his creative projects don't depend on their approval. It makes him untouchable and completely unwilling to engage in the delusion they've all bought into. We've seen how delicate Hollywood personalities can get over a single joke. The Oscars have shown us that. So seeing them all having to grin and take it is the best gift the Golden Globes could have given us. Ricky Gervais's previous stand-up shows jokes had already gotten him on Hi. Hollywood's cancel radar. In 2018, Love two years Marcus. before, Gervais was criticized for making fun of Caitlyn Jenner. She didn't do a lot for women drivers. Ricky Gervais, who poked fun at the reality star during his Golden Globes monologue. Caitlyn responded saying, quote, I think what I'm going to do is call the oh, Golden okay. Globes and see if they need a new host for next year. No. We'll solve that problem. It speaks to Hollywood's hypocrisy that they were perfectly happy overlooking her accident which ended in tragedy. While they settled out of court, the LA Sheriff's Office wanted charges for vehicular manslaughter. But because for a very brief time she was an idol of Hollywood, Gervais was seen as the one in the wrong. In 2019, just a year before the speech, Gervais again came under fire for jokes he made over Twitter. Well, well, it's almost well. a requirement for modern comedians to get caught up in the 24-hour outrage cycle that never stops on the platform. But his Golden Globe okay. speech was the icing on the cake for a lot of them. Ever since, various activist groups have tried to cancel him over the jokes he makes. In 2022, the US LGBT rights group GLAAD took aim at him, saying that his most recent Netflix comedy special should be pulled from the platform. Of because of some jokes he was making, the media ate this up like clockwork. There's tons of articles written at the time talking about how oh, awful no. his comments were, but not a lot of actual people talking about it. The lack of popular support is clear, and it's much more likely to be yet another jab from Hollywood's elite. As they said in a statement, these people are virtue signaling, they're basically saying that minorities don't have a sense of humour, which is so patronising. These groups that people barely hear of make these statements speaking for the entirety of the group they represent, when really they're only speaking for a tiny group of people. Other than the articles oh, getting published and the wave of Twitter outrage, nothing ever happens. It's a tactic to silence people, which has stopped working. If they can get Gervais on this, then it will damage his credibility. Really though, Gervais and the other comedians who are threatened with cancellation are just doing their job. They need to challenge the boundaries and broach controversial topics. At this point, comedy is the only voice on these subjects that hasn't been stripped of microaggressions and wrong thing. At least for now, oh, companies shit. are generally unwilling to cancel people over a few jokes. Netflix, in response to both Gervais's joke and Dave Chappelle's special, released an internal statement in support of them. And even more surprisingly, they said that any of their employees who can't deal with offensive jokes might need a new job. The specter of cancellation that runs through all of this really isn't that threatening anymore anyway. Unless someone does something truly nasty or criminal, they can only get cancelled by playing into the outrage and releasing some long, cringy apology video. If people get offended over some joke they make, they can just ignore it. Without fuel, the fire will die out. Now this doesn't happen when people do something actually harmful, it's, it's hard for people to forget it, yeah. that. But when barely anyone except some Hollywood elites care about something in the first place, it's easily forgotten. It should Cancelled culture should only work like if you're literally a criminal or, or some shit. EDP. De then I agree with cancel culture that it's never been about the cause they're suddenly the champions of. The people calling out comedians for telling jokes know their audiences won't care. They don't want it, what? It only serves to make them look better, at least in their own minds. But in reality, it just shows how accurate Ricky Gervais' speech was and still is what? today. Nah, don't, don't punch your brother. The fuck? Shooting things like, yeah. <laughs> Well, it is 23. All right. Got to wrap it up. Kind of for gory was a reaction Monday. But better late than never, I guess. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. I'm not that guy, but I am that fellow. As always, love all your mentals. Hope you enjoyed your stay. And, uh... I'll see y'all tomorrow, so peace out and good night. Penis.